Welcome back to a brand new section that is going to be dedicated to design patterns and also enhancing and improving our library that we've been building throughout this course. What are we going to cover in this section? We're going to talk about interfaces and although they don't exist in JavaScript, we're going to use the mythologies and the ideas behind of interfaces to build up and prepare for building design patterns and working with specific design patterns. Speaking of which, the design pattern that we're going to try to work with is the adopter design pattern. But it goes beyond that because we're going to be working with a lot of established features to try to create and build a jQuery adopter that will mimic the behaviors of jQuery and enable us without having jQuery or with to create some basic functionalities that will be similar to the functionalities that would have been available in jQuery. So what are we going to do in this lecture? In this lecture, we're going to be talking about interfaces and really thinking about the ideas behind interfaces, because interfaces don't exist in JavaScript. Instead of that, we're going to work with defining an interface physically, really by using our own minds, because an interface is really just a mechanism to make sure that every class or every object that is going to be used in a specific scenario, you created a specific set amount public methods. In our case, we're going to have to make sure that we do that on our own without using an interface. But we're going to understand it and see how to implement these type of interface concepts throughout this section in general and in this lecture. This lecture really is a setup and preparation for creating an adopter design pattern, which is something we're going to be talking about in the next lecture. So let's jump right into it. In a previous section, we already created an adopter. But we want to make it even better. We kind of ran through it as we were starting to create our library. And I want to show you that adopter. That adopter was our query. And you see that our query, we were using it as if it's a specific function. But in reality, what was really happening was that function was defined and changed based on if the browser had support for the native features. And in that case, then we created a function that would use those native features. And in the other half, would be if it didn't, then we would load in sizzle. What I want to do next is I want to create a deeper adapter and really help you understand where could this become incredibly powerful. Now, in other languages, there is something that is called interfaces. Unfortunately, they don't exist in JavaScript, but that doesn't mean we cannot adhere to this type of strategy and rules. So I'm going to go ahead and right below after all of our code here, I want to create a new object. So let's go ahead and let's call it native query. And I'm just going to go ahead and create here a constructor function. And really, it's not going to have anything inside of it because my goal is going to be create a native solution and every native solution to put it inside of this native query. Now, native query is going to have one method right now, but it's going to expand beyond that. So I'm going to go into my prototype chain. And in my prototype chain, I'm going to go ahead and call my method query. And I'm going to go ahead and send into a two parameters, the same parameters that would be expected in jQuery, which is selector and context. Now that I've had a structure for this function, really the next step is really just to return back that structure that we saw when we were creating our code previously working with that query selector all. Now I'm assuming with the native query that it has support for it because it's the native query. We're not even working with it if it's not supported. So knowing that it's supported, all that's really left for me is to send in that selector. And instead of approaching the document, I'm going to go ahead and approach the context. Now to test this out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my application one more time. And I'm going to run my application and then test to see, could I actually get elements to where I want them to be? Now, one thing that's left here is the context itself is not existent. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Now, in the case where it's not existent, I want to go to the context and I want to make sure that if you're not context, then I'm going to go ahead and send in the document instead. But if you are in existence, then I'm going to use that context. Now, before I can really test this out, what I want to do next is I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything here and I'm going to create a new native query. Now that I have a new native query here, some of my application will stop working and I'm not going to worry about it yet because I might. It, right now it, it wouldn't work, but so I'm going to go ahead to my query here and just send it to Q query because that is the name of the method. Note though that for now, as we're testing things out, the sizzle area is not going to work because the logic here has not been configured yet. 
But if I go ahead and I click on refresh now that I've configured that, and I'm going to go into my terminal here or into the line to my line of control here, I'm going to go to my native code here to my query selector, my geek query. And I'm going to ask for a specific item. I'm going to ask for my message. And if I go ahead here and I see this, I'll see that I'm getting back that node, my message back. I could then go ahead, also if I wanted to, I could go ahead here and send that node that I got back. If I really saved that information, I could go ahead here and I'm going to wrap it into another GQ. And the first parameter, I'm going to ask for a selector, but the second parameter, I'm going to send in that native object. And it's going to be that native object in position zero. Last but not least, I'm just going to go into my HTML document here for a second and see inside of that message area, I have here a span. So I'm going to go ahead and ask for just a clean old span. So I'm going to go into the browser and I'm going to send as a parameter span. That's what I want to get back. If everything is working as expected, what's going to happen is the message is going to be sent as the second parameter, that object. And then from that object, I'm going to ask for the spans that are within. So let's go ahead and see if it works. We're actually getting more than what we would expect because we really only wanted to get one span. So let's go ahead and try to figure out where is the breakage here. So if I go into my code here and I try to figure out if the logic here inside of my query is logical, it sure is. Let me check if that function that's being called, that query function that is really being called up here, if it's, oh, and here we go. Our problem is, is that we're not sending in the context. So let's go ahead and add in Oto the context. And I'm going to save that, go back into my application and click on refresh. And this time around, I'm going to go ahead and run it one more time. And now we'll only get one span the way we would expect it to be. In this lecture, we were preparing ourselves for the creation of an adopter design pattern by working with sudo interfaces and creating a mediary that will help us control our application. In the next lecture, we're going to go ahead and actually create an adopter design pattern as we continue and create this process also for the sizzle library and then integrate everything into our application, into our library. So see you in the next lecture.